16 plus. Let's move into the final game of the round. Oh. It's Sunday. It's coming at you from Four Pines Park in Brookvale. It is the Manly Seagulls taking on the Sydney Roosters. Now, we'll do this episode a little bit different. I'll quickly read through both team lists. We'll talk about the game. We'll talk about how both teams are going. And then we'll talk about who we think is going to get the result. But you've got Ruben Garrick, Jason Saab, Brad Parker, Taluta Kola, Christian Tulavatu, Josh Schuster, the man that Wants the big money. He signed the contract three years, two point four million dollars. You got Daily Cherry Evans, Mister Paseka, Lockman no. Froker, Mr. Sipley, Olakuatu, Kelma, the Burbo brothers in Jake and Ben are back. Josh Alloway, Ethan Bullimore, Aaron Woods, Jake Arthur in the eighteen with Morgan Harper, Mister Vega, Carl Lawton, and Sean Kepi in the extended bench. You flick over to the Sydney Roosters and you have James Tedesco. Daniel Tupu, Billy Smith, Joseph Manu, Suali'i back from suspension, Luke Keary, Sandon Smith, Mr. Hargraves, Jake Turpin, Lindsay Collins, the man that is in absolute red-hot form at the moment. You then get a little bit weird. You've got Victor Radley in the 11 jersey, Nafua White in the 12 jersey, and Nathan Brown in the 13. You've got the man that keeps finding his way back into this squad, Drew Hutchinson in the 14 with Terrell May, Sua Wan set to make his debut for the Roosters, and Fletcher Baker on the bench with Junior Bargo in the 18th man jersey. You then have Corey Allen, Zach Docker Clay, Nat Butcher, who could come back into this lineup, and Mr. Call Me Daddy, Dylan Napper, makes his appearance on the team list in the where, is, where, where has he gone? He's playing. He's playing for our juniors, so he's playing for our North Bears in the Sydney. So he was. He was. He was like your enforcer in front row, and I remember it was like the hundredth year of NRL or the hundredth game of um, State of Origin, and he played that um, Arthur Beatson in that jersey, and there was big talk and rah rah. Then then he just. Switch to the dogs, call me daddy. Then what is it? Europe. Really, that bloke's what a what a what a what a roller coaster of a of a career you've had, Mister Daddy Napa. So, um, well, let, yeah, let, oh, let's yeah. talk, let's talk about both sides. Obviously, back. So first of all, let's go back to this Manly Seagull side. Obviously, there is no Ben. Tommy. What's his name? Tommy. There Tommy. is no Tommy Trebojevic, but we do have Jake and Ben back in the squad. Gary at fullback does show that he does have the qualities. But what do you make of this? Obviously, this could go one of two ways. You've got Josh Schuster in the half. He now knows Luke Brooks is coming in. He knows that he's expected. He's playing second role. row. He's going to play second row. But that's what I'm saying. He knows his expected role now is supposed to be in the second row. However, he does want to play halves. Now, I think he's going to be okay. He signed the contract after they've told him, hey, mate, you're playing second row. But It was a day later. Expect- what was that? It was a day later after signing Luke Book. So the writing was on the wall. You're not going to compete. Yeah, You're not going to be the bloke. Well, really, you could be sitting in back row for a year and you could come back to play six. But then they signed Jake Arthur. They've got uh, Cooper Johns as well um, in, the heart, in, the, in the six role as well. So... It wasn't really an official thing in his contract that he had to play six this year. Um, under, under well, I think it was really under. I think it was more. No, 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 no. There, there was, there wasn't. There, not I, that he had to play six. There was a, there was a clause in his contract that if he re-signed, he was to play in the halves in his contract. I, I heard it was more of a handshake agreement, not in in writing. Uh, it was more of a. A handshake with Desi at the time of his contract and said you would be playing in the halves, obviously six, um, because you're not going to move on DCE. Um, that's what I heard. There was just more of a handshake agreement. Um, obviously, whatever whatever it is, it hasn't worked out. Game weight, perform, performing. He, he's had his chances. Look, don't get me wrong. He's had his chances to be this player that we want him to be. Um, he signed, isn't it? He signed for $2.5 million for three years. 2.4 over three years. He signed the three. Oh, I, thought, deal, I, thought that, I, thought, I thought that was Luke Brooks's. No, deal. no. So he, 
Luke Brooks he has got down here seven hundred k for four years. So what's that? Is seven it? times four is twenty eight. Uh, Luke Brooks. Free deal. Oh, sorry, Luke Brooks. Yes, sorry. Schuster's Luke a free Brooks deal, eight hundred thousand. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. No, no, it's not two point four. It's two point five. I know it's two point five. No, because I've got it right here it, in front of me. Channel nine, wait. two point four million dollar extension. I heard it was more two point five, and it's going to be front head, uh, front heavy loaded. So they get really um, some salary cap uh, relief in the back end of the year. But they also signed Jack, uh, Jackson Paulo from you guys. Um, Ruben Garrick on big money for 2020, uh, until 2027. 20, 20, um, who's the other one off the top of my head that they haven't they re-signed? But anyways... Without, I've always said this. This is a time we now need to start look like uh, now need to form a side without Tommy moving forward. Tommy is this bloke that is worried about his hamstring, not worried about his hamstring. Wants to play Origin, and gets injured, and then you got to live life without him. So, Garrick's a man at fullback. Maybe Morgan Harper, if he's fit, ready to go, comes into the centres. Um, I've I, I'd push it in now, Jake Arthur, to seek Schuster into the back row somewhere and start to use this season as like a, another pre-pre-season um, for 2024 because at the moment they sit 13th. Um, just under you guys um, on points by, by, by a single point. Um, so really, that's, I, I'd, I'd be using this, this game, especially against the Roosters, you could say they're off their pace, but really every other year they're the sort of benchmark of the team. So let's use this game as a, um, a I don't know how like to use it as a platform of seeing where you're at. Put as I said, put Schuster into the back row, take Arthur into the halves. Let Cherry do his work. Garrick does his work. Jason Saab, good to see he's back. Um, Morgan Harbour, Harbour obviously coming into the centres. So, uh, this is all my opinion. And Joshua L.A., um, really, I, I really see him as a third aim, but you got Jakey there, but I see him more as a front rower. So, um, as I said, use it as a platform to see how you are for a pre pre season 2024 and write this season as off and, yeah, plan around no Tommy going oh, forward. Oh. Well, you definitely don't have no Tommy because you're stuck with him on 1.1 million till the end of the 2020. No, nah, medically, medically season. retired, medically retiring. I, I don't think they medically retire him because I think that would have already been in the works. They're already talking about how they can get him back into this squad and back in shape. But I do yeah, agree yeah. with you. I think, I think both teams, both coaches need to kind of come in and kind of say to their team, like, this is it. We lose this game, our season's almost all but over. We win this game, we can now kick start a chance where we could make the top eight because it's so close that they're six points off second place or six points off third place, whatever it is. A win this week is so important because both these teams then go into a bye next week. So it's a four point game if you want to look at it in that perspective where, okay, teams are going to catch up, teams are going to get their buys, but the person that wins this game, when they get their buy, is most likely going to be in the top eight. And They're come, three points outside the eight. So the Roosters are two outside? Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying. This week... You and, they've both week got, and they've both got the same amount of buys. That's what I'm saying. You win this week, you then get your buy the following week after, you could find yourself in that top eight. And I'm not saying, okay, yeah, you could, you're in the you, top you sit, eight. You, you probably sit uh, fifth. You could probably sit in a range of fourth to six at the moment. So that's what I'm saying. For, for Manly and the Roosters, if they can get in the top eight, they stop playing catch-up football and they start playing, we're in the top eight, we just need to relax and play our game. So I think this game is important, but let's well, jump let's back to the Roosters just I'm before just... we give our predictions. And Baxter, I want to talk to you because I, I don't want to be that person that sits here and goes, we're struggling because of injuries. Well, because before you, before you, I was going to say, before you get into the Roosters, so after this, the Roosters, then they host – the Cowboys in round twenty. They got then they play away to the Sharks, then the Dragons, then the Roosters again. So really, this is this is if you want, we want to talk about that, that uh, those points. You win this one. It's a do or die. 
you could probably roll on for the the, the, uh, the reverse fixture and win again, and that's an easy six points over over uh, over two games with the bye, and that pushes you again. You pushes you up to top two. Um, if and, you, that, if and that's it, what I'm saying. I think I think you're in the beneficial where you can say to your team this week, you guys win, we're in with a chance because look how close this ladder is. But on the reverse, you guys lose. It's going to be massive because look how close this ladder is. So yep. I think yep. it could go one of both ways, but I think it is going to be a tight game. I think we will see a lot of points because both these teams have showed that they can't really defend. But we've spoken about the Trebojevic injury. They, they're they getting back Jake and Burbo. They're missing Tom. They've had injuries all year. Let's talk about the Roosters' injuries for a second. And obviously, they do welcome back Fletcher Baker. They do welcome back Sueli if from suspension. Oh. We then look at the players they're missing. And this is where I kind of want to get back to what we said about the Dolphins. Not that we should be losing with the players we got out. I'm not using it as an excuse, but more so the combinations that aren't getting formed. You've got Satili gone for the season. You've got Egan Butcher out with a concussion. You've got Brandon Smith, who probably still has two or three weeks left with his thumb. You've got Connor Watson that hasn't played a game this season. You've got Paul Monroski, who's injured his shoulder. It's out to round 22. You've got Natch Butcher, who's named in this squad, but to be confirmed to drop out. You've got mm-hmm. Angus Crichton with a knee injury that could be out for the next four to five weeks. You've got Sam Walker that hasn't played for five weeks. So, yes, the Roosters have talent, no doubt about it. We see the names I've got on their paper. They should be doing a lot better. So I'm not saying it's the talent and the depth that's the issue, but do you think the Roosters are suffering from a combination crisis? One week I'm playing next to Billy Smith. One next I'm, I'm playing next to Paulo. One week I'm next to Corey Allen. Then I'm next to Drew Hutchinson. Do you think it's A, identity, identity crisis, B, they're not gelling, or C, just the combinations are out the window? I'm going to go with D. It's a bit of everything, really. I think I think this season is is a, it's typically uh, – I've said it before. This isn't a Roosters – a usual use, a Roosters club. You've got this all this outside noise with um, Jason Rolls, you know, leaving or wanting to go to the Dragons, then being booted from the uh, told to stay. Then, yeah, you can go for compensation. Then booted, you know, more longer got a new job. Um, you got Teddy at fullback, Yamanu. You got to try and you want to get him more ball, so you move him around. Um, then you got the Sawali signs with rugby, but no talk to ma- the management of Roosters, which is a weird one. In, again, a weird one in itself. Um, doesn't talk about it, and then talks about how he, he's, he's his dream to. Um, he, he always wants to chase his dreams and wants to play for Rugby Australia, and it just, as I said, it just doesn't seem like. A Roosters um, squad that we've come to know and accept over the years. Usually there's little to none office or coaching staff um, rumours or murmurs. Like apparently there's rumours that within the coaching staff people are off Trent Robertson, which apparently is, depending on who you talk to, is true or not. Um You've, you've never really suffered this many injuries as well. You know, you wanted to change up your halves. You dropped Sam Walker, who I, Queensland bias aside, I thought he isn't the man that is the problem. And I think you brought on that, that uh, the uh, the stat about his defensive effort um, after the first two rounds and uh, compared to the next five of his, def- uh, of his efforts. Um, so... And again, he Roosters are playing too much structured football. They're afraid to go outside the box. That's why Sam Walker's there. I think he is the man to play this. He's all he, he's basically like a six wearing this number seven jersey. Where okay, structure, 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 play this, you know, get to the 40, kick down here, get to the 30. I need you here. Rah, rah. Oh, there's a hole, boom, I'll run that hole. I'll put you in a hole, I'll put this person in a hole. You know, there's a lot of. I think he's the man to go forward, Luke Kiri. I think you're a, a great. Uh, you are a great bloke, but I think you better to play six than you are to play seven. Um, again, you sign uh, Brandon Smith. He's been a bit of 
kind of missed this season, injuries, suspensions, um, for, uh, personal form. Um, you got Jay Turpin there, you know, could have used him in a rotation. Um, Matt Lodge, you signed him back end of last season on a train and trial. Really, really, really good. Could be the prop of the season. Uh, prop of the season if you're only judging on the rounds that he was in the NRL. Come this season, he's a bit of a hit and miss. You let him go. Um, you re-signed Jarrell Hargraves for another year. Victor Radley again, Mister send, send it to the bin. Radley loves to play on that red line and occasionally pushes it, pushes the um, pushes it over. I think this is the year where Trent just gets it and just throws it in the fire, a fire uh, place, and just goes to forget about it. We'll work on next season, but as you said, as we've as we talked about the Manly Seagulls, Roosters win this game, has the bye, and then in five weeks later, play the Manly Seagulls again, wins again. That's six points, uh, six easy points for them to jump into fourth. Um, as I currently look at who you've got in the next couple of weeks, where you've got Manly at home, Dolphins at home, Eels away, Tigers at home, and then South away. No, surely not. No, no, no. You just, wrong, you wrong. Somewhere. Wrong, wrong. That's, uh, that's after you play the Manly twice. We go Manly, Storm at home, Titans away. Broncos away, then Manly's back at home. Sorry, sorry, I've just gone straight to the after bit of that. But as you said, six points, you're back in fourth. It is a bit of a disable season. As I said, this is like we expect Bruce. Oh, I, I expect it, and I'm not even a Bruce's fan. I expect Bruce's to be in the top um, one to two teams. Every year, it's but now you've got. Funny. I'm glad you brought that up, back six. It's actually funny. A non-Roosters fan, you had him in your top three. I had oh, him struggling, sure. not struggling to make the eight, but I had him sitting in that fifth to eighth range. So yeah, it's oh, quite oh, interesting. well, you, well, we say we say Roosters are expected to win to be in first or second position, but now we have got Storm, Penrith, Roosters, Broncos, Warriors, Broncos. Now the Warriors, the Sharks. Cowboys are. Oh, sharks of last year, the Cowboys Eels. of last year, they're finding the feet. It was so really this this you know the talent, the, everybody's sort of catching back up, and I think it will take the rest of this season, Trent, to get his coaching staff right and fully uh, like clicked into staying at the club and not wanting to go elsewhere. And um, yeah, I, I think this year is like that. I think it was 2013 where he comes second last and um, he just really rode off that season. And then he, he really came out um, a few years later. Oh, oh, 2012. We won, we won 2012. the conference 2013, thank you. Which, which year is the Mitchell Pierce's? 2012. 2012. 2012. That's, the, that's the year, sorry. 2012, you rode off that year. You salary cap based anyway, but you rode it off. Then the next year you came out and won it. So... With Sunny Bill, I, I, so. I will say, I will say, it is quite interesting. Obviously, a lot is going to develop over the next couple of weeks. Does Joseph Suwili go to rugby union early? I, he uh, says he's I, you know what? You know what? I, if I'm Trent and I'm trying to look beyond Suwili, I'd let him go. Let him go. I, I would let him go if we and get have some someone in mind. But if we well, have someone in mind, well, to bring well, him. well, you've already signed Tupu. Um, an extension, okay. Ne- uh, we're, t- we're just going to go for next year, right? So you right. sign two posts for next year. Billy you've Smith got has played about an injury, so ex- expect him to get injured at some point next year. Well, you got Joseph. You got Dominic Young coming in from the night. Yeah. So, but again, Dominic Young wants to play center. Okay, put him in that center. Get rid so of he Billy takes Smith. Billy Smith's position. Yeah. Do you put Junior yeah. Bargo back on the five? Junior Bargo number eighteen. The guy that's been playing the last couple of weeks. Like I who, really who, haven't. Who, I haven't been really. Know. I haven't been really watching the Roosters, to be honest. But, but that's what I'm saying to you. The Roosters aren't going to let him go unless they have someone of his or what they perceive as his quality coming in. So if you've got seven hundred thousand dollars, go out and find someone you can do. Hey, people are pissed off at Brendan Smith. Who knows if he's going to stick around? He owes people money. It's a bad culture. Are they going to kick him out of the club? Is someone going to try and sign him? We don't know. But no, nah, I don't think you get rid of him. I think Trent really gets 
him fit and lean in the off season that he. I think I, he doesn't play nine next year. Where do you what, you reckon you play him as a roving thirteen like he did at Melbourne? No, I th- play him at fourteen, coming off the bench. I like think he, he comes off the bench because you're going to have, and even now oh. I think he could slip into potentially that if Radley hits in his number eleven this week and he plays well, I'm leaving oh, Radley sure. there. I'm playing Jake Turpin. I'm playing Connor Watson in the fourteen. And I'm having Brandon Smith as a rotator. There, there's another. That. There's another player that we've you, you guys have missed as well. I know he hasn't played a game this season. But Connor Watson. I think he'd be. Well, don't forget, we only signed Jake Turpin because Connor Watson got injured. Everybody's saying this. This Drew Hudson is this. Um, who's that Mister Fix It man that you had from uh, Ballina? Who was that, Mister? Yeah, all that. Uh, Mitchell Orbison, mate. I think, it's, I it's, not, it's not Drew. Or, it's not Drew Hudson. It's Connor Watson. Connor Watson's the new Orbo it, when he Drew, comes back. Drew is Drew is Orbo in the fact that he can cover positions. He just can't cover him very well. So <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's, no, like, but no, 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 no. Mitch Orbison could play any position and play it brilliantly. Mitch Orbison's the best number seven to win a premiership, isn't he? Is what he, he, he he could play. He, he, mate, him and Luke Lewis are the only two players in the NRL in the NRL era, to play in every jersey of their career. So 1-17, to they've played in every number. They're the well, only you know two what? players. You, you slap a little bit of tape on there, you call it Mitchell. And you know what? And you know what? I'll probably, have them, I'll probably have them both in my starting second row, uh, second row positions. But I tell you what, I see Morris running around the water bottles, and I think he can do a decent job. Still ah, mate, position, well, position, maybe, so. maybe, you know what? Maybe get rid of Sue that he, Josh Morris comes back. And he can play, hey? Who over that, eh? Well, Baxter, like we said, there is two teams that have been hit by injuries. They are welcoming back a few players each this week. It is almost a do or die the way this season is going, how tight it is. But I guess give me your prediction. You know which way I'm going to go. You don't know what margin I'm going to put, but give me your prediction for this game. Oh, I don't think you know where I'm going. So no Sammy Walker, no win for the Roosters. I'm going Manly 1-12. to Beautiful, because that's where I wanted you to go, because I'm going the Roosters 1-12, to 12, and I'm oh. hoping that the, that the changes I've made this week get me back on top, but oh, the way my sure, tipping's been going. Oh, sure, sure. There's, a, there's a few there that you got. You got oh, you tipped the Cowboys 30 plus, so you might get three points there. That's all right. As long as at the end of the year when everyone doesn't go back and watch the podcast, <laughs> I can go to the, your family tipping comp and I can see that I'm sitting above you in the tipping comp. Oh, mate, I haven't tipped in that for like a couple of weeks and um, behind anyway. So, but back so start, obviously, we will we will wrap up there. It is Sunday football, it is round 18. We have been talking for two hours all up, mate. So, thank you for joining me. Enjoy your rest. Let's click in. We're going to have an absolute cracking weekend of football. There's some absolute blockbusters. It kicks off with a derby between the Sharks and the Dragons tomorrow night. Let's hope it's an absolute cracker. Let's hope there's heaps of points. Mate, I might see you over the weekend if I don't have a great weekend, and we'll talk soon. Peace.